Husk. Written by James Barnett. It's the waiting that gets to me the most. Precious moments wasted in a time most crucial. It's dusk and the valley is red. Dark storm clouds form overhead. The sound of cicadas invades the air and the shrill sound swells as they all click in the evening. The sound reminds me of moments before sleep. A low ringing that closes in my head, which could be the sound of silence slowly driving me mad, or just tinnitus. The sound becomes at times intolerable, like a mosquito in the night. Forever there, forever feasting. The sky grows darker and the cicadas settle into a rhythm. The sound comparable to a house party that goes on too long, and the neighborhood ripples with annoyance. Each passing moment my anxiety kicks me in the guts, which further adds to the unease of my predicament. The sun finally drops and the red turns to grey and grey turns to black. Turning the key in the ignition, the car roars to life. The brake lights illuminate the rear area of the car. I look in the rearview mirror and through the scarlet light I take one last look at the dirt, dense scrub and low hanging trees. The disturbed area no longer a part of nature but added to the list of spaces that humanity has managed to ruin. The cicadas give a moment of respite as the high beams click and buzz to life. The car jerks forward slightly as I slide the stick into drive. The lights paving the way forward along the dirt road. The car trundles along, dipping into potholes, causing the plastic of the dash to creak and pop. Julie's wedding ring bounces off the centre console and onto my lap, and I move it into the drink holder. It would have been lost right now if I hadn't gone and found it after she threw it into the brush earlier today. She was such a juvenile sometimes. I did apologise for slapping her, after all. I reach the highway after a couple of minutes and look left and right. On the left there is a road into town that has lights shining towards the sky. They are the only signs of other people out here in the country. On the right is a dark road that leads into the mountains. It is wide and cavernous with the clouds hanging above it. That is the way I'd prefer to get lost in. A scream tears through the night and I jump in my seat. Looking for the source of the sound, I look out the window and off the side of the road is a curlew. It is standing there with its wings curved and pointed toward the ground. It screams again towards the car and its eyes are locked on mine. Nah, bugger off. I look back toward the road in front of me. I really need to get this done. The crunch of the dirt gives way to the hum of the tarmac highway as I turn in the direction of the town. The shrill sound of a cicada breaks the silence in the car. I turn to the back seat and I see it on top of the petrol can. I'll get you later, you little bastard. Where are we going, Jack? In the front passenger seat, Julie is looking at me tentatively. She sits at a funny angle with her feet up and her knees in her chest. Preventing her from putting them down is a copious amount of rubbish. Bags and bags of it. We have to get rid of this rubbish. I already told you that. I snap at her. She recoils at the acid of my words and wraps her arms around her legs and stares forward toward the road. I see a cicada fall on her shoulder from behind her ear. Julie! Don't freak out, I say. There's a cicada on your bloody shoulder. It shakes its abdomen and drops specks of dirt on her white t-shirt. She ignores me and continues to look out the window. The sporadic flashing of the petrol station sign catches my eye, intermittently bathing the car in red light. Fortunately, it is closed for the night. The car rocks side to side as I pull off the main road into the station. It appears abandoned due to the dilapidated state it is in, 
but a bug zapper at the front door and a floodlight around the back tells another story. The floodlight shines on the source of my search almost purposefully. Reminiscent of when the sun pokes through the clouds in rays, and my mum said it was God reminding us that he was there. Bullshit, I reckon. The brakes give out a squeal as I pull up next to the dumpster. Wait here and don't move, I say to Julie, unfastening my seatbelt and getting out of the car. I open her door and grab the bags of rubbish. They are surprisingly heavy for their size. This gives her enough space to put her legs down. The smell wafting from the bin rouses memories in my mind and a flush of deja vu courses through my body. Putting the bags down in front of the bin, I lift the lid. I peer in. Two black eyes are staring back at me. I involuntarily jump back in surprise and lose my footing. Pushing my hands out behind me, I break the fall. Sharp pain shoots up my arms, making my hands tingle. Scrambling to my feet, I look back into the bin. The same two eyes stare at me, and I realise that it is a small wallaby. Its viscera spread throughout the bin. Who the hell would have done this? I grab all the bags and lift them into the bin with a heave. It fills quickly, and I slam the lid down in an effort to get the soul-piercing eyes of the wallaby out of my head. The seat creaks as I get back into the car. I look at Julie and she's looking down near her feet. Her legs are back up on the seat. A plethora of rubbish bags sits in the cavity of where I just emptied them from. What have you done? I say, irritated. Nothing, I swear, she says, her eyes averting my gaze. I go back to the bin and it is still full. Confused, I get back behind the wheel and pull the car back onto the main road in search of another place to get rid of the rubbish. I contemplate her words. Don't know why you play these games all the time, I say, shaking my head. An annoyance grows in me. An inky black, pulsating. Tickling on my hand draws my eyes to them on the steering wheel. It is a cicada. I flick it out the window and give out a chuckle, as I imagine its tiny insect limbs smashing on the road. I told you I'd get you, you little prick. I spy some dumpsters to the side of a hardware store off the main road. No more funny business, I say, glaring at her. Her eyes drop and her face becomes expressionless. Nothing I do will ever satisfy her. I pull in beside the bins and I turn the car off, and again the sound of the cicadas chorus continues. Shaking my head, I attempt to dissipate the disorientation and make sure it isn't a block in my ears. On it continues. I stumble a little as I get out of the car. Cautiously lift the lid of the closest bin, the tingling in my hands making it hard. The smell of rotting flesh invades my nostrils, but I can't find the source. There are only a few broken shovels in this one. The smell gets worse and I'm unable to hold it in. I lean beside the bin and vomit. A flash of Julie's still face pierces my mind. Cicadas crawling on the ground get covered in my sickness, and they do their best to disperse and move away. The shrill chorus rings in my head louder than before, and I get angry. Just fuck off, will you? I scream while stomping on them. My shoes get covered in a mix of vomit and cicada remnants. Once I am satisfied with the carnage I have imposed on them, I turn back to the task at hand. Walking back to the car, I see Julie's expression is one of pity, which incenses my anger more. Don't look at me like that, I yell at her. A feeling of dread develops in the pit of my stomach. Her features drop flat and she stares forward out the front window. I wrench open her door while letting out a sigh, and again I empty out the bags of rubbish. These ones are far heavier than the last. Surprisingly, they don't break as I transport them to the bin. 
With the car emptied again, I close the bin lid and get back into the driver's seat. Turning in my seat to look at Julie, I can see that she is gone. And in her place are bags of rubbish. Looking around the car, I see that there is even more than last time. I cry out in frustration and punch the steering wheel. I can barely feel it with the tingling in my hands. Where are you, you bitch? I scream. I look down at my hands and they are covered with splinters and bleeding from pop blisters. I see movement out of the corner of my eye. The bags are moving. I look in the rear view and see Julie's face. Pale white. Her eyes glossed over. She opens her mouth to speak and cicadas come pouring out of it. The bags break open and a thick layer of dirt bursts forth and starts to fill the car. Slowly, it starts to move and I see worms, cicadas and spiders wriggling through it. How can I get away? My hand fumbles for the ignition. Eventually it finds the keys and starts the car. I race out of town and open the windows. The wind picks up the dirt and insects and it pours out of the car. Blooming trees flash by. Their shadows look oppressive as they reach for the car. The lights flicker and die, but the full moon illuminates the area. The road changes to gravel and it crunches under the tires of the car. The speedo reads 140, but still doesn't feel fast enough to escape. I push harder on the accelerator and cicadas continue to pour out of Julie's mouth and out the windows. The sound of them is so loud now that all other sounds are lost. My hands bubble on the steering wheel and cicadas break out of my skin. The tingling stops. Unable to take the noise anymore, I slam my foot on the brake. Dust flows through the car and its acidic taste is on my lips. It crackles like popping candy between my teeth and causes a memory to flash in my mind. I see Julie's half-exposed body in the dirt, the bottom of a large hole in the ground. Her eyes stare blankly at the stars. A shovel is leaning against the tree. There are no tricks to erase me, Jack, she says, now back in the passenger seat. I reach into the back seat and fumble for the petrol can. The dirt now gone and is replaced with Julie's clothes. I grab the handle of the can and pull it into the front seat. I open the lid with ease in the absence of the tingling. I pour the petrol over myself, the cicadas and the bags that are full of Julie's belongings. I give a hoarse cough as the fumes enter my throat. My lungs burn. It goes completely silent. I look around and on the dash sits a cicada husk. I'm so sorry, I say, looking back into her eyes as a sob catches in my throat. I flip the lid on my zippo and stroke her face with my other hand. Her neck has a purple ring around it. I flick the wheel on the flint and the lighter sparks. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe, comment, share and like, and press the bell to get notifications when new videos are uploaded. If you have a story that you want Jimmy Horrors to read, send it to jimmyhorrorsnarrations at gmail.com. Until next time, stay horrific everyone.